What is this AI companion down here? I wouldn't mess with it. No, of course no. It's like I don't uh, need an AI companion. What's that? Did you see that article that the Catholic Church had came up with their patron saint of the internet? What? Yeah, I linked it in the Royal Path discussion. Wait, that guy's the patron. I saw it. I was like, that seems a weird computer programmer saint. So he's the patron saint of the internet. I'm done. I'm done. I'm a done. Fifteen year old. I'm done. Computer programmer. I'm done. I know, right? It's over. So, hi everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew. Tonight I'm going to ask Cyprian and Father, what was, what is your guys's like, we're out of a fast, so what is your guys's ideal, like, what's your good burger setup? Like, what, what, what kind of patty, and like, what kind of toppings, and is there like, special ingredients or toppings that you guys like on it and stuff? Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I was actually just talking about this. There have been a few times in my life and luckily there is a place here that does it that where they will make like a black bean veggie patty. That's like really like well done, well seasoned that almost, almost tastes like meat, but it's clearly it's not. Um, and I actually prefer that if it's really really well done and maybe there's only three places that i've been around in my life where and and here is one of them like i say but it's that bun has to be toasted i actually prefer a whole wheat bun i want lettuce i want tomato and i want grilled onions and those are the things that i want like and and a spread not not, not a not ketchup not mustard but like some sort of a like a thousand island spread like in and out style and that's just me a com just a picture of the communist manifesto like <laughs> right in there because the, <laughs> yeah the, man that's weird yeah i was gonna i don't want to be that guy but i'm just get, saying that's what i like i mean i can't help what i can't help what tastes good to me it's you know what it is it's a texture thing mm. it's a texture thing for me like that mm. That setup right there for me, yeah, knocks. I mean, I'll eat any burger, but that setup right there just knocks it out the park for me. Sorry, sorry. I mean, guys. hate well, me, but that's that's where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna throw too much shade. I was a vegetarian for seven years, so I'm not gonna throw too much shade. I'm not even a vegetarian. That's, I'm not even a vegetarian. That's what that's just, what boggles the mind. That's what truly boggles the mind. That's the factor in the whole thing that just completely throws me for a loop but moving on moving on <laughs> cyprian i would eat the crap out of that any day of the week like I'm if saying. it's a good veggie burger if it's a good black bean burger good spread i would absolutely eat it like of it's I'm, funny I'm, shade, like a, but... I'm like the anti-veggie guy burger <laughs> um and i didn't like for what you think i i got violently sick Ooh. um eating at this um burger joint down the street from an old tattoo shop I used to work at, and I haven't been able to touch. You can ask Papadi. I haven't been able to touch veggie burgers since. It's Whoa. Been 20 years. It, it, it's, it's, it's been 16, 17 years um, I've been able to really do it. So, anyways. Um, yeah, you know, I, I like... Um, I'm, I mean, I'm with Cyprian. I'm from California, right? So, like the thousand spread mm -hmm. with a with a you know a golden toasted bun. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm really big into the grilled onion with cheese melted on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, in and out stuff. You know, I'm really I'm really mm -hmm. big into that. But the defecting aspect of it for me with like Five Guys was like getting this extra stuff. You know, like bacon and. Jalapenos and stuff. So, um, 
I like to throw on any other kind of extra meat. Like I made this burger the other day. I was like, I would, I would have paid money for this grilled prosciutto. I grilled some prosciutto Ooh. and um, mm -hmm. yeah. It's almost, that's there. almost like a Canadian bacon almost. Yeah. 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 I, I grilled some prosciutto on there and um, that's good. had everything else. I had the golden bun and, that stuff, but every time I get to throw on a little bit of mystery meat, some secret meat on there, it's just like, yeah, I'm I'm a novelty guy when it comes to burgers. So, sure. Anyways. What about you, Andrew? Um, well, I thought that there's a place in Kansas City that sells a 10 ounce burger, um, and it is so just the way that they do it is just so flipping good. Um, I don't know why I keep feeling we're gonna cuss tonight. I'm trying to really rein that in. I don't know what's going on. Like I don't. Cuss, I can tell you really. why. It's because all the burgers you've been eating. Oh uh, well, maybe. Yeah. No. All the burgers you've been eating, your flesh is out of control. Yeah, for yeah, maybe. I'm like that one guy from Popeye that's constantly eating burgers. But the, wimpy, wimpy. Um. So yeah, it's it's like sick and you know all this stuff. But then recently I've been actually doing smash burgers at home. Hmm. um and i'm actually don't really eat that many burgers it just so happens that whatever i they happen to come up um so i made smash burgers at home and i realized like oh this is what i like now like i like like two hmm. smashed patties with like a piece of cheese between them or whatever and hmm. then i'm like pretty standard uh it's like ketchup and mustard and onion are the bare minimum but mm -hmm. any kind of like any mystery meat, like father said, or lettuce or tomato, mayonnaise. I even go mayonnaise sometimes on it. It's like, um, it's like, that's pretty, that's pretty legit. And then uh, if you guys get like a basket of burger, whatever, Cyprian. Like a White Castle slider type of thing? No, 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 no. Like if you're at, it, like you get fries and the burger. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you always eat all the fries first or do you eat? The burger and then the fries, or do you kind of mix it? No, I, 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 I'm going back and forth. Oh. I'm going back and forth. I don't know. Yeah. I always eat the fries first. I don't know why. So really, yeah, always. And a little life hack: if you go to a Hispanic restaurant, doesn't just have to be Mexican; can be any of that that serves free chips and salsa. Fill up on the chips and salsa and eat a little bit of your food. Take the rest of it home. You got yourself a second meal. That's all I'm saying. That's what I do every time. Hey. Yeah. Uh, right. Right. You order your enchilada platter. But, but I didn't go way. there for the chips and salsa. Like and you're I going to the wrong Mexican restaurants. You're going to the wrong Mexican restaurants then, friendo. No, 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 no. I mean, salsa. I enjoy the chips and the salsa, but I didn't go there to have a meal of chips and salsa. I did. <laughs> chips and salsa is easily my top five favorite foods of all time. A good, oh, for sure. For a good sure. Chips and salsa. I'd sit there and. It actually can be a problem sometimes. I'll eat way too much of it. But anyway, I always eat fries first. I don't know why. The fries have got to be gone, and then mm. I can start on the burger. So, That's interesting. Yeah. but That's interesting. I think that uh, shout out to this little local organic eatery called Culver's. But Culver's has like really um, – it's out. Sorry. You guys say, bring you're from California. Culver's mm -hmm. is a very, very popular, very popular burger chain in the Midwest. So. Okay. Yeah, Culver's okay. does smash burgers, and that's who made me realize, oh, I like this is what I'm going for. So, anyway, okay, burger talk. Sorry for everyone who's listening back, and it's in the middle of a fast. Sorry, <laughs> I, as you just you know struggle a little bit. But before we get started, mm. Father, this was so. Out, I, I'm going to ask you about the Acts of the Apostles about mm -hmm. the um, the reading today. Um, because some part of it, this doesn't really happen to me, but when I was reading, I was like, what the heck is this? Mm -hmm. So, um, so it is Acts 10, 1 through 16, and it's like the last six verses. Okay, so uh, the angel spoke to Cornelius and said, you got to go find Peter. And mm -hmm. then the part where I get lost is the next day as they went on their journey. Oh, wait, Father. Is it okay if I read this, or as a priest, should you read it? Like, is there? No, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay, go ahead. okay. The next day, as they went on their journey and drove to the city, Peter went up to the house to pray about the sixth hour. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners, descending to him 
and let down to the earth. And it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again. The second time, What God has cleansed you, you must not call common. Uh, what God has cleansed you, you must not call common. This was done three times, and the object was taken up into heaven again. Mm -hmm. What is that? I don't understand. So all the things that were... In that sheet were unclean animals that Peter, as a good Jew, a good religious Jew, would have never eaten. And so this is the beginning of God revealing to him, breaking down the bears now. And so this is also where you see in Galatians and, well, just later in church history, that's not going to talk about the book, but where Paul and Peter, you know, are at odds um, over Peter not willing to eat with the Gentiles. And then Peter basically is like, what are you doing? You know, this is an affront um, because this was th that wall of enmity between the Jew and the T Gentile was done. And this is where God had given Peter that vision for him to now recognize, um, to not call the thing that he's made clean, unclean. Oh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. all right okay all right that's when i okay stuff because mm -hmm. i was like i was completely like yeah i have no idea what's going on when i was yeah. at the first time okay all right so this this i uh, this is a good jumping off point because this is actually the concept i'm glad you did that because this is the concept that's been going on in my mind like and maybe in my heart i've been praying on it a lot too but it keeps this seems to keep coming up and it's sort of it's related to, I think, on this show, the discussion that we've had about it that was, I think, the most instructive was when uh, Father Peter Hears was here and we were talking and he mentioned we were talking about canons and he mm -hmm. mentioned that the, all of the that the canons are descriptions, not prescriptions, this concept mm -hmm. and that they're revealed and that they always existed, that they're not like some rules that somebody said, oh, it should be this way and we should do this thing that they're like revealed by God and that mm -hmm. it's like the 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 punishments or whatever that are in the in the canons for an a, you know an infraction is like that's it's not something that's given by men it's a description of like well this is what's happening to you on a spiritual level regardless of what you're doing and and i've always had this this has always been a question to me but it's i don't think we've ever ex explicitly discussed it but this is a great jumping off point because there's like a lot of examples of this, of my question is this, at this moment that we're talking about here with Peter, I think it would seem if you're going prescription, if that these are prescriptions and not descriptions, somebody would say, well, there's now a new dietary covenant. Like there had previously been an old dietary covenant. There's now a new dietary covenant. But if you're going like from the description side, it would seem something like this was always the covenant, but sort of they misunderstood it before this moment. Like it was somehow not fully, the fullness of it was not understood. And therefore it's kind of like up till then it was unfulfilled. And I'm just like, do you understand where I'm going? Like, this is an mm -hmm. interesting concept to me that it's like, was there are we really talking about like a new covenant where the covenant has been rewritten or are we talking about this new covenant is like things like we're seeing more clearly that like pieces, like things that the glass has been wiped clean. Yeah. You understand what I'm asking here? Yeah. So when Paul says we see through a glass dimly mm -hmm. now, you know, we see in part, right. And even there's the portion where we prophesy in part, you know, um, and, and so we see that everything is moving us towards greater understanding and greater revelation. So something being revealed. Um, so definitely there's that aspect and that that is the case. But I don't think that's to say that there isn't... Um, mm, there isn't something to be said for the kind of the potential for the both and in this area does does this make sense you know because we know that 
the Old Testament is the revelation of God and 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 the revelation of you know the prefiguring of Christ, right? And that the New Testament and everything subsequent of that is that revelation being, you know, given to to a greater fullness. The reason why I didn't say to its fullest is because there's this weird thing we have, right? Where there is no new revelation. That's why we're like, yeah, Islam, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, like anything outside of the dogmas of the church, we we fundamentally reject. Um, and that's why the the need for understanding the eschatology of the church, understanding the 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 necessary resistance to spirit of antichrist, spirit of the world, because anything, you know, again, St. Paul, if an angel comes and preaches another gospel, let him be anathema. But that's not to say that, you know, when Jesus says, there's many things I would say to you, but I can't because you can't bear them now. That, that isn't to say that there aren't things that um, to us seem new, um, but they're, they're just they're just greater and further revelation. Um, so this it's not quite answering what you're asking, Cyprian, but I, I think it'll keep us kind of on that track because just within that there's so much. Like you know the 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 um, the medicinal aspect of of the canons and what they people don't talk about this. Um, they don't see the they don't see the penance as you know as medicine. They don't talk about the fact that if you look at the canons, it's almost like you can reverse engineer what it, what it means to be a human being, huh. right? <laughs> no one no one thinks of like I'm others. You know, I'm you know I'm just saying in the 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 typical Orthodox Christian who even is bothered with the canons and a lot of you know a lot of people aren't aren't aware of them. Um, those who are, they don't think of the canons in that way, right? Um, but if you begin to have that lens, it becomes very interesting. Um, because for me, well, if you want to understand God to a greater degree than what you understand God, you need to understand man. And if you want to understand man to a greater degree than what you got, you got to understand yourself. So you begin to understand yourself, then you begin to understand man. You begin to understand man, then you can begin you can begin to understand God. And then you hit the wall, and then it's like a whole nother ball game, right? Because God forbid that anyone would think that I'm saying something erroneous, right? Don't don't misquote me, you know, because what I'm saying is that we we what is apprehensible, what is what is approachable and what we can apprehend in our limited mind about God is largely because of the awareness of, of what we are. Does that make sense? Because yes, outside of that, you get into direct revelation, which is extremely rare. Um, and when that happens, that's one of the reasons, this is one of the reasons why, just for instance, why St. Sophroni is like one of the greatest saints because of his ability to articulate his encounters with God, mm -hmm. right? Because he he's able, his encounter with God is, you know, an, an, an encounter with, you know, we're, we're Orthodox Christians, right? We're not exclusively apophatic, but we're pretty close to it. Right. And so since we're pretty close to it, then that means that when you have someone like like St. Sophroni, who's able to really articulate his experience of, you know, the divine darkness, it, it says a lot. Is it, is what I'm saying making sense? This is. Yes. Yeah. You know, am I losing you guys? So no. no. Um, so Except for me, for, I just want to say really quick, Father, what is apophatic for those who are just joining us? Sure. So apophatic is essentially 
the, the negation, like understanding things through negation. So we don't we we know God by saying what, what or who what God isn't, right? Therefore, we prefer this way. Although some Orthodox Christians who are excited and they read the mystical theology of the Eastern Church by Vladimir Lofsky, which is a classic, but they read it and they think, nope, Orthodox are only apophatic, which means we only say what God isn't. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Cataphatic, meaning the opposite, we like describing God like God is love, this and that. We we will we will be we'll employ cataphatic terms as well. But we prefer the apophatic because the apophatic is the primary way by which you can um, approach the discussion or approach apprehending mystery, mm -hmm. right? Where it's the second you say God is something, then you've lost it because you're 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 limiting your circums you're circumscribing the uncreated, and you can't do that, mm -hmm. right? But there is a place for the cataphatic, and especially in your if you're talking in regards of um, missions, evangelism, um, pastoral care, um, you have to employ the cataphatic. And part of that is because of the, the weak psychological, philosophical, spiritual disposition of, of contemporary man. The cataphatic is absolutely necessary in, in those contexts of like, you know, pastoral care and these other things that I mentioned. So. I have a question. So apophatic is like what is apophatic is like what is what is not in regards of trying to understand or approach. So when when we approach things from that lens, like is it wrong to say like what limit do those um like I want to say like uh those categories, how far does that go between ap apophatic and cataph cataphatic? Meaning, like can I say something is because christ is revealed through the liturgy and so like the liturgy kind of says something about is, am i making sense like because wouldn't like the nicene creed almost be like cataphatic this is kind of who god is and this is what he did or am i missing the point on something here because it's like it seems like the church is okay with saying cataphatic things yeah like like let me give you an example what we're talking about god is love Okay, God, yeah, God's love. That's that's First John, you know, the the first epistle of John. Uh, and yeah, God is love. But then we we say that that's a that's a cataphatic statement, right? But we would understand that apophatically, right? Because then it's like, well, 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 what is love, right? And then all the categories and descriptions you'll give of love, oftentimes will be you know, not to say incorrect, but limited. And so by saying God's love and just by, and by the, the thought that you could limit what and who God is by your categories and descriptions, that's problematic. Does that, does that make sense? You know? Yes. So, so that's, I guess the better way to, to wield that is to always say, you know, just so we're clear, you know, um, whatever I'm going to say about, God is always going to be limited and God transcends that. Right? The second that, you know, I'm I'm only describing something about God for your sake. But the reality is is that God is beyond that. Okay. I feel very comfortable saying, you know, trying to give someone again, the point here is, you know, don't clicky clack me on this one. Um the point here isn't to have and none of my points are ever about um, to have a, a, a greater academic scholastic articulation or something like that. I could care less. What I care about is, is this leading someone closer to God or not? You know? And so that, that's the thing right there in regards of the apophatic and the cataphatic, you know? I can feel that. I can yeah. Feel that. I, yeah. I just, I, yeah, I, I think that, um, I think there's something I still need to understand about that term, but that's okay. That's all right. Um, so anyway, so if God is super, did you have something you want to say? Well, I was going to say, I, I, was, I was thinking about this 
you know, you, you, you saying the both and of the idea that one, the, the new covenant is like a further, a further revelation of the pre existing covenant. But then there's also some element of, let's say the terms of the covenant itself, uh, being changed at that moment of revelation. And I was thinking, and maybe this is maybe this is off, but it's the pattern that immediately jumped out to me is like the pattern of a father with children that like the rules that I might have for my young children about like, don't stray too far away from me, like stay where I can see you. Don't go somewhere mm -hmm. where, where I can't see you. But then when they reach a certain age, I might give them the exact opposite. Like, no, you need to get out into the world. You need to get mm -hmm. away from me. You need to go do the thing and be independent yourself. Solve that problem yourself. Do that thing. And so I'm giving them actually the exact opposite instruction. Mm -hmm. But it's because they've changed. But it's not the opposite, though, right? Like, okay, go expand, expand on that. Help me to understand how understand it's, that. It's, it's not the opposite in the sense that your instruction is not to be defined by the movement of, of what it is, but rather that it is. <laughs> so like you don't understand water by whether it's running south or north you understand right. water by a completely different category right okay so so your instructions to your children are not defined by opening or limitation it's defined by care and love and sacrifice does that make sense yeah so it's not about the it's not about the content of the instruction it's about the context of the instruction so, for instance, the the giving of Levitical law and the <clears throat> the idiosyncrasies that are there are for yes to kind of show God's holy, but really it's about setting Israel apart. Mm. It's about setting Israel apart, and then the opening up. Right, the the opening up of everything, that's always in there. Mm -hmm. That's why that's why when you get people, you can always like ah, I hate to pick on them, but you know whatever. But like, I mean, I actually I love picking on them because they're ridiculous. But like Hebrew Israelites, you know, it's just like it's it's pathetic because they just they pride themselves on knowing the scriptures so well. They're like some of the worst idiotic examples of quote unquote biblical exegesis like that are possible right but it's like the reason why i'm saying this is because for all the, like oh you know this is that the old testament it's like i go have, have you ever, ever read the old testament it's like so if if their their premise is you know Jews are chosen people, and we're the new Jews, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, who cares? But what I'm trying to get at is there's so much in the text of the Old Testament just for refutes what they're saying, talking about, like, the Gentiles and all this stuff. God had always intended to, to have salvation for all men. You don't need to read the New Testament to see that, Right. But in some sense, you do, because, you know, obviously the Jews now, whether they're, you know, <laughs> either way, they're sons of the devil. But whether they're black Hebrew Israelites or, you know, nation of Israel or whatever, they're both sons of the devil. But the point being is they're both blind to the reality of like what's there in the Old Testament text, because they don't they they're after the heart of their father, the devil versus mm -hmm having the heart chasing the heart of, of the father on high once you have the far once mm -hmm. you have the vision of the heart of the father on high you it's all over the place in the old testament yeah the the openness that was coming the openness that was always intended you know the put mm -hmm. you know don't put off mercy and justice for this for the the less weightier matters of the law that's that's really apparent through, through mm -hmm. all those things is this you know what I'm saying? You follow what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Father, it's almost it's almost self-evident. If your intent is not to prove that you are the chosen person, but instead to try to understand what is God doing? 
Right. Like what? Like to right. try to, of course you can't right. fully understand it, right. but to try to comprehend it in the best he, way that you can, like, what is he doing? What is the movement here that he's, but, that he's enacting? But you're going to forgive me. Cause in like four seconds here, I'm going to run and grab coffee. Go. But, <laughs> but, but before I do that, I'll just say it's great because you just, you know, I was telling sister Zang it today. I was like, I want to break the internet tonight. I kind of just want to like, I just kind of want to say all the things. So that no one can ever have a discussion about, you know, I don't want to ruin people's careers and like they can't have internet orthodox conversations. <laughs> anymore. I just want to say, look, guys, here's these things. Like mm. these are just the truth, and just like, you know, what I'm saying. But mm-hmm. in, re- in regards to that, it, that's the problem is that everyone's like, I'm the star, right? And when you're the star versus caring about what God says, like that, isn't that what all the commandments are about? Isn't that what Christ was teaching? And this and isn't this how we go dark? Isn't mm-hmm. this how we become the portals? Mm-hmm. We become the black mirrors by which the, the demons come in because we how am I fitting in here? Right? Here's the, here do you want to know why you go dark? Because you're like, how come that other person's getting something that I'm not? Right. How come I'm not, you know, why is this not about me? And then yeah. it, it's always that. If Whatever problem you have, it's always that. It's always that, right? Even if it's a legitimate problem, mm-hmm. right? Because because here's where I would submit to you. Even if it's a legitimate problem, right? Like something terrible happened to one of your children. Mm-hmm. Of course you go dark because it's like, but you know what? This is going to be hard because we all, we all face this, right? But still because it's your kid. Even when you are just like busted up, yeah. Don't get me wrong. Even when you're busted up about something happening to someone else's kid, right? The sorrow that comes out of empathy and love that yeah. can that keeps you open to grace. Yeah. But the kind that makes you go dark, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's like, why God and all this stuff. Like that always comes because it's like, oh, that happened to that kid, and it's like you're scared that's going to happen to your kid. And we yeah. all face it if you have kids. But I'm just yeah. saying that line and that ability to go dark because of turning in the black hole of ourself, you know, there's your Terrence Howard moment. Like that's yeah. that's the real black hole is like within you. And once you go there, that gravity, as we all know, is really tough. And it takes mm-hmm. the day star, it takes the, the miracle of the day star to really pull you out of that, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's gone. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. He just mic dropped us. Yeah, he did. He truly did. He was like kabla, <laughs> and just walked Other away turbo with the mic drop. For real, he dropped the mic without ever even picking it up because it's attached <laughs> to his vestments. But where do you go? Yeah. Where do you where do you possibly go from there? Well, <laughs> I can say this. Go ahead. I don't really have anything to say. <laughs> I, I was going to try and wing it, but I figured it'd probably be best not to. But... <laughs> Forgive me. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you just mic dropped, Father. You mic dropped us and you took off. And then... We were here Forgive flabbergasted. Yeah. <laughs> Forgive me. It's all good. Me. It's all good. Um, yeah. So it's is okay. So is it like viewing things through the prism of the self? How does this affect me? Why does this do this? This that's what darkens the news. Like, is that what you're saying, Father? Is like, you know, I don't know, taking national yeah. trends, It's like, and this is how it affected me. And like, so the attention becomes on yourself, and that's what kind of darkens your news for yeah. yeah. There's this whole thing too. It's also the it's like it's the thing that allows you to become a portal. It's how the demons find you and how the demons use you. Right? So it's, it, so mm-hmm. would you put validity to, I know we try to avoid pop, uh, pop culture, psychological terms or whatever, but would you put validity to then the concept of a narcissist like that they have to constantly bring it back? So then would, okay, is this just a pathological thing that, you know, is obviously spiritual by nature or is this like, what would you kind of, could you do like just a real quick breakdown of your ideas, maybe of what like a narcissist is and how it's damaging or something. Well, I mean, you know, so narcissist, right? Where does that term comes from? Right? Narcissist you know, mythology, star- narcissist. staring at himself. Yeah. yeah. 
right right in the water so like the thing is is every every human being has their own life we've talked about this a bunch of times it's like that's why it's it's tough because now not so much but i remember when when i first came into the church and just pull me back if i get lost in this anecdotal story but i remember when i first came into the church a young lady who um you know she her her uncle was a priest and stuff and um she was like one of these typical um, a typical woman of that age who just had a real um, was was projected and, and fashioned herself an intellectual right um flirted with some new age stuff um was like orthodox by like default kind of you know priest was an uncle or her uncle's a priest but like uh anyways um but i remember she was practicing yoga was starting to get like really into it and i remember i don't know where she's at now but i remember about the time that she you know basically kind of like left the church and I, rem I remember thinking to myself, I, I was observing that people were getting upset because they're like, oh, you know, she's practicing yoga and this and this and that. And it's it's kind of like the same thing I, I we've talked about before, but I, I observed this where someone will say, this is bad. And it's bad, but you're saying it's bad kind of like for moralistic reasons. And then you end up making the thing worse for the person because they know that you don't know what you're talking about. So what I'm saying is, is like, I remember her talking, I remember kind of hearing secondhand about one of her experiences. And I remember thinking like, oh, that's kind of a shame because no one's going to, no one's going to tell her. It's like she talked about the light that she would see during meditation, right? And I was thinking, this is kind of sad because no one's going to tell her that that light is true, but it's not God. And so she's mistaking that divine light or she's mistaking that light that she's perceiving as a divine light, but that light is herself. Mm. Right. So how does that all tie in? That's narcissist. That's the, the light that <laughs> the ability to see the self is inherent to all human beings. This is, this is one of the key things about everybody ready time stamp talking about, you know, uh, JP, but a couple, a couple episodes ago, I was like, I had to get all serious and have that kind of like look in the camera moment and be like, look, this is a problem. When you start teaching people to navigate the inner space recklessly, you don't understand what you're doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was like, and he being the Jungian, you know, expert should know better. You would think blah, blah, blah. So the reason why I'm saying that is because this is one of those moments where yeah, I, there's different opinions on this. There's different approaches. It all depends on your experience, I guess. And I, I know I have read fathers who are like, look, the Jesus prayer is safe. Okay. I'm saying from my own personal experience, I have seen and have known people to go into delusion from it. So we can now say this to, to like reconcile to where the, what I'm about to say is complimentary right? Not contradictory. I'm not trying to contradict any fathers, but the Jesus prayer is safe insofar as, right? There's, there's these two, these two basic prerequisites. You have a guide and there's something called the circular method, which is all the fathers talk about, which is, you know, delusion, delusion proof. Now that being aside, the reality is, is that for sure, these people that I've known personally who've gone to delusion from it, it's not the Jesus prayer itself, right? But the reality is, is that from them practicing this, from them going into the inner space, you know, without proper guidance and that, it, it, it causes, it makes them susceptible to delusion and madness. Mm. And this gets back to the whole thing of like the fundamental reality of people being able to, you know, catch vision of their their own light right so instead of seeing it in the sense of like 
I'm looking at how beautiful my big blue eyes are. That's not what we're talking about, right? That's not what we're talking about. Um, what we're talking about is when someone begins to move into these areas of quote unquote contemplation, that's what we talk about, like the inner space and these spiritual exploration, which is very similar to what the psychonaut thing is, but it's not quite the same, by the way. That's mm -hmm. that's a different faculty. Um, it becomes dangerous because what people begin to, if they're sincere about it, they can begin to have these experiences that are real. The problem is, is that they're of a, they are not from the father of lights. Mm -hmm. Right. So all that being said, you now get into a real low level example of someone fancies themselves clever. You know, the other day I was leaving the Y and uh real interesting phenomenon leaving the Y and there's this, you know, young lady, uh, a Y worker, um, outside and she was just kind of like you know like a twilight zone just like gazing at her phone like this like fixing her hair you know yeah yeah and i was like yeah are you doing like a instagram thing like what are you doing you know but it's just like it was so much as like i observed her walking by and i'm a weird looking dude you know so not that i'm trying to get people to turn it but it's just usually i'm so odd that like there'd be some break and something but you know there's no break so much so that I, I'm in my car and I'm leaving. She's still transfixed oh, wow. into the thing, you know? You be, That's a little low-level practical snapshot of the problem of narcissism, right? That That's on its most basic level. Um, and and if you understand how that plays out, it's like she was oblivious to everything around her. Or, or should we even say everyone around her? Right. But now you kind of expand that out. It's like, what if she has children? You know what I'm saying? You can begin to see the ramifications of this all the way up to cutting yourself off from the source of life. Because I guarantee you, forgive me, I, I, well, I don't want to guarantee you anything's possible, right? Who am I? But I feel pretty strongly, you know, I'll bet you my lunch tomorrow that her connection with God is, you yeah. know. Yeah. All right. Um, it's yeah it's the forgetting of the self it's like a it's like the moments in which like oh it gets so is this one time it gets so like um it's such a bummer when it happens but i, I think i've shared the story before it was i was serving as an altar server and so i was giving bread and wine afterwards and for like uh i think i was just giving wine but for like three glorious minutes i had this moment of just completely forgetting about myself i was like perfectly trying to like make sure that they like wine no blessed wine like spilled on the kids lips or anything so i was like bending my body down this perfect way and for like three wonderful minutes i like completely forgot about myself and that was like that was this whole wonderful thing that happened and then the exact opposite would be what you're speaking about with that young lady and it's like well i know which one i felt closer to god with when i was like that mm -hmm. when which like one that was true yeah. like um uh, divine and it was like yeah well well the thing is too is that it, it's unfortunate because you know i would be surprised if she didn't have a child i'm just you know not to stereotype her but i'd be surprised if she didn't have a child and i would and what's shocking about that is is you know her if this is her disposition like how it is for many people it's it's the very thing again getting into narcissism it's the very thing that begins to cut them off from the source of life so having a child as a woman is fundamentally like there's no there's no greater softball underhand pitch that you can get if you want to know god like oh man i don't know maybe maybe i should tone it down here but i mean i don't have a twitter so you're good like you, mother, you, it, it's it's just that mothers, women who are mo women are mo <laughs> mothers have uh, the potential to experience God in a way that is very different from men, 
And that's why it's all the more tragic when women basically, um, what would the word be? Mm. Uh, they waste that potential and that experience for the sake of self, right? And this is, I, you know, this is a great tragedy because um, so much of what is put out there is aimed at moms and, and aimed in such a way that that really facilitates this like separation this separation of this core thing which is sacrifice you can't know god you can't know love you can't experience the divine without sacrifice that's the key thing about narcissism is getting back into like this woman with the experience and like i see this light it's like yeah that's not god right you mm -hmm. can think it's god but but it's not god like in order to understand god you have to understand sacrifice right and and mm -hmm. And that's that's the core thing here. That's why for us, the experience of God is never just about, you know, the phenomena, right? Whenever we talk about experience, it's not just abstract. We're not talking about phenomenology. It's not just about like, right? These things are always, it's 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 holistic in the sense that experience is never divorced from dogma. And dogma, mm -hmm. you, you see what I'm saying? It's always it's couched mm -hmm. in this because experience divorce from dogma is <laughs> you know, and so this this reality of experiencing quote unquote God and, and the divine without suffering, without sacrifice, and all these things that are revealed to us as the as God, right? Mm -hmm. This is this is this is where we're at, and this is why quote unquote I am all, I'm of the opinion that quote unquote narcissism is is not something that we're just now identifying. I'm of the opinion that it is on the rise. I'm on the um, and I and I mean like actual, you know, not just kind of like, yeah, all human beings have this potential to be selfish and self-absorbed. Where I'm talking about narcissism. Where like full me. blown that full blown narcissism. Well, yeah, patholo I'm, I'm, pathological narcissism. Pathological. Right? But how I, could it? But how could it not be? You, you've got. I mean, you've got cameras that in your pocket that can take full video of you, and then you can post. You can put a filter on it, make yourself look. However, which is, I think, to me, if you wanted, like, because it's a, you know, it's an addiction. People mm -hmm. are addicted to this. And we have Korean tourists here. And I'm looking at these young women who will come down. I mean, they're in this most beautiful place. And their eyes are, they're only experiencing this through their screen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they're not even, their eyes aren't even on the actual beauty. They It has to be mediated through the black mirror. And I watch this and I'm like, this is, well, this is a drug. This is this is a spiritual drug that that they have going on. And it's like when you add in the idea of like beauty filters and all of that, it's just like that's your it's a it's a it's mainlining narcissism. You're just it's the it's the drug of narcissism going straight into your arm. Yeah. And and it and it makes you again, the ultimate tragedy is that it separates you from God. But before that happens, it Remember, the demons are always looking to have us made in their image. The demons are are always looking to impress their psychology on us, right? That's 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 the thing. And so, we when we enter and we engage and we foment these behaviors that essentially do that, it becomes really problematic because you know one of the biggest problems is that again. Um, this idea when people would think, why is God so distant and this and this and that? Like, God's not distant. Even from the lady who's just self-absorbed, like, isn't that the shame? And isn't that going to be the the tragedy, the heartbreak of hell is the disappointment of love where people are going to recognize, man, God was there the whole time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, but but you would cut yourself off. 
God was right there, right the there, time. all around you, in front of you, and you chose. Well, that's really what you're describing. That's really what that experience is that you're describing, right? Is that it's like my reality is here to here. That's mm. it's not even anything. It's like it's not even like a distance thing. It's a straight line <laughs> that I've I've limited my entire reality inside here, and it's just self bouncing like mm-hmm. almost in a feedback loop, right? Like two, mm-hmm. like a microphone and a speaker next to one another. Mm-hmm. Just like getting louder and louder and feeding mm-hmm. back on itself. And I can't, there's nothing else. Yeah. I yeah. can't take in anything else. Yeah. And, it, and it's interesting too, because how many of us have had this experience of being, you know, um, trapped in because of your job, because of mm-hmm. just the nature of where we live, like, you know, just being trapped staring at a screen for, you know, mm-hmm. six, eight, 12 hours in a day. Mm-hmm. You you multiply that, you know, weeks on end. Mm-hmm. And, and, it, and it just, you know, what kind of burden it, it brings to you psychologically, spiritually, emotionally. But you know what's funny is that how many people have had that experience of getting outside and, and opening your eyes? I mean that because you can be outside, obviously, and not have your eyes open sure. and just to... But like when you begin to observe nature, that's that's one of the values of observing nature mm-hmm. is that it, it kind of cuts that feedback loop mm-hmm. and it allows you to take in the, the glory of God, you know? Um, and I, I think when we see how, isn't, I mean, it, again, one of these weird, uh, if I had, if, if I wasn't just thinking about it right now, we'd have a good term for it. But, you know, like think about the, again, the tragedy and irony and the, the kind of um, the affront of like the uh, current, the ongoing crusades about climate change. You know yes. what I mean? But yes. at the same time, the hypocrisy of there's all this stuff about climate change but yet everything are surrounding it, including the medium by which it's discussed, cuts us off from nature. From <laughs> yeah. nature. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. 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 Right. So it, it's 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 that level of tragedy. I just love it because that's that's how I see it. It's just it's tragic, you know. Yeah, it is interesting that it's like the the argument all the arguments that are made for this supposedly natural and environmental crisis and disaster that's taking place is all like PowerPoint presentations and like Mm -hmm. charts and graphs rather than Mm -hmm. like taking people into nature. Yeah, It's Mm -hmm. like, wait, isn't it supposed to be happening in nature? Because if you took them into nature, nobody would see a crisis. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I supposedly there's climate change and the seas are rising and it's like, I don't know. I live on an island in the middle of the Pacific. That's supposed to be one of the places that's like super, you know, worrisome about it. And it's like the people have been here 3000 years and like they're like, "Eh, it's the same as it's always been, guys. (laughs) Like, I don't you know, I don't know. You know, (laughs) until until it's time to get a little federal money or a little World Bank money, (laughs) then then they'll be like, oh, we're suffering from climate change. Please give us a billion dollars, you know. But on the real, they're like, man, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, You know, so I don't know. It's it's one of those things where. You know, the. The game is so lucrative Yes, speaking of like cash, but also just in regards of, you know, who, who wants to who wants to wake up and who wants to kind of like deal mm. with the the reality. You know what I mean? Um, so you 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 begin to get it and you begin to see what it's so much more comfortable to stare at yourself and to be enraptured by what you perceive um, of yourself than to have the the painful experience of seeing God for who God is. But, you know, those of us who want that, we would attest that it's, it's absolutely worth it. You know, it's absolutely worth it. And it's something that's different also too. It's like, um, it's something that's very different than I think the kind of satisfaction that someone gets from, you know, um, you know, there's a satisfaction you get from learning a trade. There's a satisfaction you get from from learning how to work with a certain material. 
Um, I guess some people get that same satisfaction dealing with like physics or whatever. Um, and that there is something satisfying about that, about learning something and being able to have mastery or something. But there's just something different when you're able to connect with a sibling or your wife or husband or child or your child. Right? Like that. Yeah. I'll <laughs> wait. I'll wait. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just no, no, hit, no, that's I hit great. home. I don't know what's better, the fact that you yelled yeah or the fact that your your hands are the weird. But uh <laughs> that was great. a very like um it's like a very like mystical way of saying like it's like very eastern to be like sorry. Yeah, yeah. Speak, speak Yeah. no evil. That's it. Then you Yeah, got to exactly. just do one of these and <laughs> then one exactly. of these, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 all I was going to say was just that, um, yeah, maybe it's played out, but, you know, this reality of, of the satisfaction that comes from being in communion. And so one uh, just to kind of close the loop on the narcissism thing is that it's very difficult for someone who's becoming embroiled in that pathology and in that sickness. See, the thing is, they can... they can be in the Orthodox church. They can be in the institutional Orthodox church and many of them are, or there are, or I should say there are many people who are in the Orthodox church that are afflicted with this. But the thing that I find um, fairly consistent is that, you know, being in the church doesn't make you immune to it in the sense of the institution and the kind of the, the culture that surrounds the institution. what makes you immune to it is Christ. And so once you are, once you've had the satisfaction of, you know, Christ and not Christ as like Christ consciousness, Christ the means, because there's lots of people who have that. They would never say that, but if you've known people who are into Christ consciousness and other new age things like that, and then you know people who are just, really stuck on methods and means of things, quote unquote, that are orthodox, you see the similarity in them and it's kind of scary. You know what I mean? Breaking out of that and being like, you know, no, like hypostatic faith, you know, like God is person, you know, that is where the satisfaction of encountering the living God, it, it does make you all but immune to that because you're, Hmm. You're nothing. Once you've tasted, once you've tasted God, you're never like you're never satisfied with yourself. No. If that if that makes sense, you know. That was But like also, also that like, forgive me, Andrew. That That's okay. that obsession with the forms and the forms and methods thing. It always it always has the undertone of narcissism in it. Mm You -hmm. know what I mean? Like it always has this this, um, What kind of power this can I get? yeah. Th well, it's this it's this mirror effect of like, I'm gonna if if the more of this kind of. What's well, a Simon Magus type of thing? It's like, what is the magical spell? What is the magical spell that gives me power? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like power as opposed to salvation. And it's like, if you're not saved, why would you even want power? Like, I, I don't if for me, I'm scared to Mm -hmm. to have to have power, like to have more. I, I need to actually probably have. You know what? Right. I, Right. to to God's ears, I need to have less power actually at this point in my life, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, because the wiring is faulty right now. Like I, yeah. I'm 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 still working on getting the wiring right because if you j throw too much power into it, you're just going to burn out the fuse box and start a big fire. And I've done it before in my life, so I know what that looks like. Yeah. God knew what he was doing when he waited till I was 34 to give me a platform. That's That's all it, I'm going dude. to say. Like That's I it. had to, I had to be there for quite a while. And I mean, I think that, um, what was I going to say? I can't remember off the top of my head. There Well, was something let I was me going to let say. me let me draw a parallel of something, you know. And I don't know what people think, you know, but like with Terrence Howard, right? Well, I was going to go there. He's the obvious next step for us to go to. So go ahead, So, please. so like with Terrence Howard, I, more than observing, you know what he was talking about. I was I was observing like how he was talking about. Things. you know 
And his so much of his emphasis is about like I, I did this, I have that, I la la la, you know. And the thing is, is that um, when you look at Saint Paul, which you know, I'll just be really frank, I'm doing a terrible job, but I really, I, I really do try to emulate Saint Paul in a lot of ways in my life, and kind of like reveling in my weakness, you know. That's why you know, besides just being a good aspect of Jewish humor. But self-abasement's like, you know, it's it's a it's it's a um, stronghold. It's a it's a safe tower. Um, Have you been? But in, really, it's like, huh? Have you been in any boat wrecks, Father? Like, you know, any sinking ships? Because Saint Paul was on two of them. That's all I'm saying. Like, okay, I'm trying to emulate him. I'm just saying. We get. Well, I haven't been on any. It. I haven't been on any boat wreck, but I've been a part of some pretty bad companies and nonprofits. So that's <laughs> that's pretty close. That's pretty close. Yeah. That's, that's pretty, that's close. pretty yeah, close. Absolutely. So, um, so, anyways, this thing of what I'm trying to get at is what's interesting is, is that, um, for instance, I love this. Right? It's like I am a Jew, circumcised of the eighth day tribe of Benjamin, student of Gamaliel, you know, like all this stuff, right? Jew of Jew of Jews, right? I count it all as rubbish. I count it all as rubbish, right? Uh, St. John, the forerunner and Baptist, I must decrease, he must increase, right? St. Sophroni, how do we, you know, how do we even like, St. Sophroni, what, his brilliance, which he would, I'll say it, his brilliance in some regards, you know, outshining his 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 elder, his thought Silwan hides his brilliance behind the fact of I'm nothing. I'm just here to reveal my elder. I'm just here, like he he used his elder as the vehicle by which he could bring forth, open up, share all the incredible things that God had revealed and done through him, right? Brilliant. Escaping the trap of the demons, right? By Very going much. low and, 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 right? So finding that, like, that's what St. Paul did. St. Paul, you know, I know a man, you know, I know a man in Christ, you know, whether caught in the body, I, you know, who knows, right? Up to the third heavens, like, Paul experienced all this amazing stuff, but Paul is able to really hide all that by how? By going in Christ, right? So that's the method. That's that's the method. That's why it's like, you know, don't look at me, look at, look at Christ. Don't listen to me, listen to Christ. That's why, you know, we do better the less we talk about our opinion and the more we uh speak on what the fathers say right that that's the thing so the opposite is revealed in the world and again terrence howard and and donald trump that's why the world can respond to them so well because that's what the that's the way of the world it's the way of the god this world speak on yourself you know this getting back to the narcissism and like i am at the center of everything you know what i mean and y'all are really just the kind of npcs in my game yeah right that that movement it's right. all of them it's andrew tate you andrew know what tate. i mean yeah, it's yeah. you know when you were talking about motherhood father who immediately came to my mind was uh kim kardashian having surrogates yeah. because she didn't want her anything to happen to her body wow through the pregnancy you know and it's like sure, wow sure. speak yeah. about cutting yourself off and like to the Lord ultimate mercy. degree right what a mercy yeah, Lord have mercy. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah. But these yeah. are the but these are the most celebrated individuals in, uh, equally, in the world. But equally reviled. But equally reviled. Like I mean, yes, it, because yes. like there's no way man, as created in the image of God, would like we're not going to suffer that silently. We'll do it. I mean, obviously, we're going to watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians, but it's almost like disgust. It's a disgust fest or whatever. I mean, like, look at the way these people live their lives. and But, like, at the same time, I can't look away. You but, know, you know, well, that's... But that's people, but people emulate it. Though. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. That's well, what a narcissist, a narcissist doesn't care. It's not about like. Well, it's like what I, you said. A narcissist doesn't want, doesn't need you, or want you to love them all the time. They just want you to be thinking about them. Right. Yeah, it's like what you said about you know people think of when they sell their souls or whatever to get famous. There's the devil, and you sign the contract with your blood or whatever. But it's really, it's more like I'll do whatever I have to to get on. Well, camp. sometimes it's a sometimes it's a paper contract signed in blood. Don't sometimes get, it don't, is. I mean, sometimes it is, my brother. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Don't get me wrong. I mean, and I think we could probably point out a couple of things. Yeah, it's clear. Like mm -hmm. it's clear when the mm -hmm. contract was made because you became mm -hmm. a completely different person. Mm -hmm. So, did you know that Katy Perry? Used to be a Christian, Christian, singer. Christian singer. Yeah, yeah. And she was in a POD song, a payable on death song, and yeah. over the, what was her breakout hit? I kissed a girl and I like right. That that's was her right. breakout hit. That was know. her breakout hit for sure. And since I don't know, that's one of those um, people. Even through the TV or over the phone or whatever, I can see electricity, the electricity coming out of her head. So like it's she's clearly just like well, and of course she was with Russell Brand, right? Oh, I guess I didn't. Oh, yeah, I guess I did know that. And he's yeah, who, was, who was baptized, but I mean, into some like evangelical. Well, OK, let's talk about that, because I yeah. haven't really caught up on that. Uh, I, I had a spiritual son send that to me when it happened. Uh, and I haven't really. You know, I mean, I want to give everybody a bit of the doubt, because what's what's um, what's my. Uh, What's my anti guy's name? Uh, Rygar. Um, yeah, Rygar. Yeah, yeah, Rygar. Well, I just saw a thing. I haven't been able to watch it. I put it in my queue, but I guess he's like making the rounds now, doing quote unquote deliverance ministry. Oh, of course he is. Yeah. <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> of course. Oh, no. I mean, how could uh, uh, Father? How could he not be? No. How could he have not gone that way? Yeah, you know what I mean. So, so basically, he still is just the he still is just the Satanist. <laughs> yeah, no, he still he did he didn't worked. stop he didn't stop. <laughs> the spell worked. The spell worked. He's increasing his influence everywhere. It's like, and it's um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> okay. Oh man. <laughs> I wanna I wanna hold out for hope, you know, but oh man. Well that's because... what I see. That's what I see with Russell Brown. Father, the day before he was baptized, yeah. he was doing a show where he was holding up tarot cards talking about him. Um, yeah. The day before yeah. he was quote unquote baptized, and I was like, okay. I was thinking back to the day before I was baptized, and the furthest thing from my mind was tarot cards. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. even doing I mean, a podcast, by the way. Or even doing anything. I mean, you know what I mean? Well, see, that's part of the thing is that I was just going to bring up St. Paul again about him disappearing in the deserts of Arabia yes. for years. Yes. You know, and like I've talked about this before, but. One of the most painful periods of my life, which is also one of the most beneficial, is when I began to follow Christ. It was just like, that's why, I don't know, it, this is kind of anecdotal. And again, pull me back if you can. Um, but I, I've had some situations where, you know, again, it's, it's just my experience. But my experience is couched and been, and for me, has been tested by. The, the tradition and the dogma of the church, you know? And so, like, some people will say, oh, you know, on um, certain situations, moving fast, moving fast with people, moving fast. And, like, St. Paul says, do not, to Timothy, don't lay your hands quickly on someone. And, and that's that's very valid. But what I'm talking about is what I have experienced, talked about it before, it's like the Indiana Jones thing. The temple door is always closing. You got to slide underneath it, you know, just in time. When you get a when you get a window of opportunity, you need to take it. And what I'm talking about is not a window of opportunity to speak and get your platform the other way. When you have a window of opportunity to get out, to go hide, you need to take it. That's what I have found. Like, and I just base it upon I had a window of opportunity. I was, you know, God opened the door for me. And I was ripped out of my life really quick, I guess, dramatic to, for most people's perspectives, whatever. It could not have been any other way. 
because to try to kind of like, and I've seen people do this, you know, well, I'm just going to stick around. I'm going to minister to these people. I want to, it's like, no, no. What is, it's, Um, I think it's, it's either St. Theotan of Clues or it's Archbishop of Berkey who says, don't try to, you know, don't put your feeble hand to stand to stay the tide of apostasy. Like, hmm. save yourself. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. It's Saint Ignati. It's Saint Ignati, but in the China. That's what he's, he's like, don't try to put your feeble hand to stay apostasy. Save yourself. Mm. And so this thing of like, and I, I remember that temptation is like, well, maybe I can, you know, stick around and share, you know, maybe that they, you know, they hear about God. It's like, nah, they're not going to hear about God, man. And, and, more importantly, they can't hear about God because you don't know anything. Yeah. So you need to get out and you need to like go be incubated. So because what you can't give someone what you don't got, you know what I'm saying? And that well, and, fa and father, forgive me. There's you also run the risk of because you don't know anything of you being corrupted by the, by them or yeah. actually not even that you are corrupted by them, but you corrupt yourself in order to relate to them. You're yeah. like, how could, how could I, and there's this person that I'm thinking of right now where it's like, you take it away from Christ and maybe you take it to like symbols. Mm -hmm. Let's just, I'd rather <laughs> talk symbols because you don't want to talk about, oh, Christ is uh, upsetting to you. Christ, the word Christ yeah. triggers you. Well, let's just talk about the symbol of Christ then. And maybe you can deal with that. You know what I mean? And it's like that when you, so the chance is there if you don't take off that like, no, you're going to corrupt yourself to try to minister to these people. Yeah, I think I think this is the thing too, um, in regards of. I, I would still like to think why our project is relevant still, and maybe more relevant now, to be honest with you, because, um, why not see more people turn towards Christ? And I want to be, I genuinely want to be hopeful. I know that I didn't, I still don't know anything. But I know more now than even though I don't know anything, I know more now than I did, you know, however many years ago. And it takes time. And so that's why I want to be, you know, it's like, God have mercy on these people like Russell Brown and like Rygar and all these people who, you know, it's almost like you don't stand a chance because you because of the fact that if your livelihood or whatever, your identity is, is such an idol to you that you um, can't, or or I should not, not, not say can't, because you, you always have a choice. You will not choose to sacrifice, you know, um, Isaac for the sake of, you know, the love of God, if, if you see my correlation there. And know? Isaac is your TikTok and Twitter account. Yeah. 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 Isaac is, remember, I like Isaac was the begotten, Right, the begotten of Abraham. Right, and so the the avatar, the the world image, is the begotten of yourself to the world. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, so it is an absolutely to say, yeah, Isaac is your Instagram account mm -hmm. is a pretty. If we're gonna do mm -hmm. symbols, like yeah, yeah. you know what I mean, it's pretty yeah, yeah. on point. It's pretty yeah. on point. And I will say, Father, you know, the that pattern that you're describing of being given given a window and like, oh, this is it. I got to do I got to do it now. I mean, on this note of accounts like that was like me leaving Twitter, which I was an early user of that platform, like 2007, man, when it was mm -hmm. it was just a it was just a mass texting app. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I met those guys in New York. And like mm -hmm. there was very few people. So I was on it for that long, but it was like being given that opportunity. And the interesting part about it was that it was it was only that window specifically. And I mean, you could just go and look at my last tweets mm -hmm. like that window specifically was coming into the church. Mm -hmm. Like it was coming into the church. And then the fact that, oh, now there's these discussions that are being had here that are related to the church. And I was like, oh, I'm being pulled away from Christ and mm -hmm. I'm being pulled into these I polemics remember. that I'm not even qualified mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. no, that now's the time. I'm gone. Bye. 
Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when you did that. I remember when you did that. That was like that was a big thing because having because that was my experience because I didn't stop drinking uh during my catechism and in shortly after my baptism. And so the same people that I was had previously done whatever with and had gotten, you know, my waste mates, I was probably making concessions in ways I shouldn't make concessions. Mm -hmm to mm -hmm. be able to to still make Christ accessible. And I mean, I didn't know anything. I didn't know any better at the time. It was like, oh, you know, Christ is malleable. He's still, I experienced mm -hmm. the reality right. of Christ, but he's still malleable to me. You know, he's like, oh, you right. know, he'd probably be in favor of this and right. you know, whatever, whatever. Right. It's like, well, no, you're you're actually kind of, you didn't exactly. And, and, so, and so I just, I want to say this too, because just to be clear, right? I'm going to reserve my actual opinion on something just because I really think it doesn't matter. But I will just say this to kind of clear something up for some people because it's it's a serious matter, um, like with Rygar, right? And we could maybe apply that to Russell Brand, although I don't know. I don't know enough about Rygar, but I I would have I feel better speaking on that than on Russell Brand. But in the sense of, excuse me, just to be clear, what I'm saying is. I'm I'm presenting this argument in the light of I think he thinks he's sincere. Let's just be sure, really, sure, really sure. Let's just be really, really clear. I think that he thinks he's sincere. Um, can God use that? Sure, no problem. Because let me, who am I to talk? But there's just these patterns that are going on where I'm like, mm, you know, again, um, I know in my life, it's the it's the opposite. Right. And in my life, it's not a matter of like wanting to vie and maintain being in the light. It's like quite the opposite. It's like I don't want to be, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, forgive me. It's one of the reasons why I like, you know, it's like I'm, I'm on a cell phone in my in my studio. It's like I don't I don't care. You know what I mean? Like that that reality of being in a place of of trying to get out you know of the world to christ like i look at that i like mm, you know these are these mm -hmm. things but you know i'm sure I, i'm sure he really is and but that's isn't that the danger because of course it's like we, it's like we had talked before it's like well your 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 ritual worked you know what i mean mm -hmm. like your ritual worked and so seeing that seeing that play out and and this and even in this reality of and this is tough right because um yeah <laughs> this gets even to the whole thing of like ecumenism mm -hmm. and how all this plays out which is you know that that's the kind of like breaking the internet moment thing i was talking about with sister it's just like you know there's just this reality that i don't know just maybe fleshing it out explicitly is kind of needed, but it's just people need to understand like people need to understand the the real dangers the real dangers of what it means to um assume that you're in Christ, right? The real dangers that are there. But the fact of the matter is is that anyone who's gonna call anyone's gonna call in the name of Christ Right, Christ will. He, he himself says, you know, like okay, Christ, Christ will save them. You know what I mean? Um, but then, what does that mean? What does that mean? And so, mm -hmm. you know, this is before everyone's like, okay, I knew it. Here we go. Let me, let me, let me, <laughs> let me share. Everyone. You know, uh, Saint Petroni he relays how he had met this old, this old Yoranda. Um, and he began to speak with him about how Christ came to him once, this Yoranda speaking about this to right? Um And if memory serves me correct, um, Silwan was with him. But he says how Christ appeared to him to this, this, old, this old elder, this old monk, rather. And um, I can't remember how the initial interaction begins, but at some point in time, you know, the, the monk is talking about how bad 
the monks are and how they're so far from him and they've lost their way and this and that. And he says, if we're this bad, what what's to become of the people in the world? You know, this is on Athos, right? So, and Christ says to this monk, every every soul, every man who calls upon my name, I'll save. And Sophronius relaying how he this uh, old monk says to him, it's like he he doesn't even speak. He's just thinking. He's just like, well, what's the point? Why am I here? Why are we asceticizing and laboring and doing all these things, right? And he doesn't even speak. It. He, and then Christ looks to him and says, "But those of you who have who have labored." you'll be close to me. And then he's gone. Ah. So, yeah. Okay. So, so the thing is, is that you hear that. And it's like, but it's like, this is, this is where there's these people who erroneously they call, they've, they've, they've thrown like Sophroni and by proxy Silouan into like this category of, oh, they're kind of, you know, universalists and blah, blah. No, 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 no. What it is, is is understanding that God desires that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Like, God desires that man, every soul will be saved because when you understand what the human soul is and when you understand the absolute, we don't even have words to describe hell, Right? I think we have this this really, and this is a weird thing because the Orthodox will get this. Orthodox will get bitten by the Latin bug real quick, and they start thinking about hell the way that the Latins do. Like, you might as well be a medieval monk in Italy, bro. Like, the way that you're thinking about hell and that God is just, like, enjoying people being thrown into the into the fires of hell, like the chicharronis. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, oh, uh, we're growing some crispy chicharronis. And it's like, God is not looking at human souls like crispy pieces of bacon. You know what I mean? Like, hell is hell is terrible. So, but then again, the other side of this is that, you know, and, and there's so much scripture. This is about the reconciled. There'll be one sheep, one shepherd. Right, master, master. These there are ones who are casting out demons, but they're not of us. Leave them alone. He is not for me; he's against me. You know what I mean? Like <clears throat> he's not against me. Who's not uh, against me? He's for me. Like all these things. Like how do you begin to reconcile that with the fact of the Orthodox Church is the true church? Well, to be of the body of Christ, theosis, right? But that. But that's not to say judgment is for the Son of God alone, for Christ alone, right? But if we believe and if we know that he is love, getting back to the cataphatic thing, but understanding that statement cataphatically, that he is love apophatically, meaning that it's beyond how we are describing love, because even on your best day, Jimmy, when you've read Lasky and you've done a couple hours of philosophy and you think you understand God apophatically, you still don't. You still have these constructs that are based upon your experience of relation. So this is why when the saints encounter Christ, like Sophroni, they encounter this radical humility. It's just like it's it's otherworldly. They don't, they don't relate. They can no longer relate to reality as you and I perceive it, but now they relate to the highest reality because they've met Christ and his humility is beyond, it's not human humility, right? So his humility is so much that he's like, look, you know, and even these people, these Latinizing tendencies where they think God is some, they think God's a narcissist who's basically like, no, no, it's about me. It's like, God is so humble. God is so humble, right? He searches the, the, the hearts, the reins of men. So for him to say, like, you know, he calls on my name, right? And we could talk about, well, what does that mean? Okay, we can talk about that. But the point I'm trying to get at is when we begin to orientate ourselves in this way, 
and talking about the beginning of, of the conversation, these deeper revelations, which are never divorced from dogma, they're never divorced from the tradition, right? But it's through the, these deep experiences where we're going to the deeper things of Christ, if Christ allows us, right? Moving past elementary doctrines of baptism, like Hebrews, like it says in Hebrews, right? But getting into these things, because none of us gain anything by talking about, by speculating uh, about who and what God is going to not do and keep out. That doesn't, you know what I mean? Because if, if that's the case, that's why, forgive me, this is where someone may feel like I'm mincing words, but uh, this is where people, again, Orthodox, fall into, they don't realize it, but they fall into a Roman Catholic mindset, right? And it isn't just about kind of like having a measure, you know, a kind of, you know, something measuring context. You know what I mean? That's not that's not what this is about, right? Our measure, our standard is beyond is beyond these things, right? And so when we look into these these paradoxes that which blow us out of the water, isn't okay? Never isn't that why you guys are here, audience? Don't you? Because the people who put who put up with us talking about burgers and bad cameras and all that stuff. It's because in the mix of this, there's something profound that's revealed, which is like, because what we're trying to do is actually pursue Christ and not just talk about like, here's the rules, here's the regulations, here's the boundaries, and here's what we don't like. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like that, that's not the substance of, of what's happening here. I am interested, and this is why I love Christ more now than I did, you know, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, is that. It's, I still know nothing. I'm still, it's still unfolding for me. You know what I'm saying? And that, that can only happen when we begin to really, you know, it's like Elder Emiliano says, you, be, you have to first recognize you're in exile. Mm. First. Right? And when you recognize you're in exile, right, it's like, there's this, there's this, there's this expression, but you don't hear often for two reasons. Number one, people don't believe it. And number two, a lot of us just haven't in, haven't encountered this level of suffering. But this expression, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. Right? There's a reason why you don't hear that often. Because, and I'm talking about within Orthodox Christian circles, right? Because people don't believe that. They don't really have a, that kind of love for their enemies. And they haven't really suffered like that. You know what I mean? It, I don't know if that I don't know if anyone's hearing me on that one, but like, I um, am. I've had I've had a couple of experiences where I was like, I yeah, I would not. I wouldn't wish I, that. I, I, I don't. There's no one. I, there's no one I hate. To yeah. and this is pre orthodox. I was like, there yeah. is no one I hate. Yeah, it, that I would wish that this was happening to them right now. Th that is one of those. That's one of those Roman moments where it's like the law of God is revealed in the hearts of man. Because mm -hmm. even though it's not a Christian statement, it's a very Christian statement. To say, I would wish this, on the, and that's why I'm saying those of us who have had a taste of hell wouldn't wish it on our worst enemy. Ugh. Right? And so that's why when someone has a cavalier attitude about some of these things, it's like, yeah, you're revealing to me you don't really understand kind of what's happening. Because although I want to, like, highlight these things about, you know, people... And and again, for me, what's the what's the problem with like, um, what's his name? Terrence, not Terrence McKenna. Um, Terrence Howard. Yeah, Terrence. Howard. Terrence, <laughs> Terrence McKenna, sorry. Terrence McKenna too, to a degree. To a degree. Yeah. he's not. He he wasn't as bad as Terrence Howard because Terrence Howard is just purely, it's pure narcissism. At least yeah. Terrence McKenna was taking some drugs and seeing some things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I just. My my big concern there, just just like with our our, our you know our boy timestamp, uh, it's the potential for people to not discern that and really get messed up. Because I know, from personal experience, people get messed up. You know what I mean? Like, let me, I'll just say this real quick, it's, it's just in case anyone has no idea, I have personal experience pastorally 
of I'm thinking of one young man in particular, but there's others where it's just like, oh, yeah, your fondness of timestamp of timestamp man mm -hmm. uh, is really has has actually gotten in the way of your apprehending Christ long before this project, long oh, before yeah. it, it became. Not before it became such a running joke that I can say timestamp man and people yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like <clears throat> that's a real thing. So that so to me, that's that's a very different thing. Like me, me bring that, that's why it needs to be brought up. But at the end of the day, it's like the fact that Christ desires all to be saved, that's you don't hear people talk about that. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? The fact that God loves the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? And then we can continue on. But I'm just saying all this, and I don't want to like beat a dead horse, but it's like becoming orthodox isn't about being like, I'm in and you're out. You know what I mean? It, that's not it it's, at all. It's not a zero-sum game. It's not like there's a limited number of seats on the bus to heaven. Yeah, we're not Jehovah's Witnesses. You know right. what I mean? It's not, right. it's not the 144,000. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? But well, I, I think, I, I think, Father, there's this, there's this thing that struck me with Terrence Howard. I, I by the way, I found the his his thing with Joe Rogan fascinating. I had kind of been, I'd seen some other things that he had done on his yeah. with his little teriology, and it didn't, it wasn't. Like, I had as, no idea. Yeah, it wasn't as striking. He's definitely he took it up a notch, and I think because even Rogan only spoke. They measured it. He Rogan only spoke for thirteen minutes in three hours, right? So even Rogan was being quiet. And I think what it is is that like what I found so amazing was it's such like you say the light of like her seeing the light of herself. You mm -hmm. were witnessing someone who was so fast and in love with the light of himself that it almost is fascinating to you if you think about it and i know that there were people who were watching who were like oh i want to experience what he is experiencing whatever he's seeing right now whatever is washing through him which was the light of himself his pure narcissism yeah. there were people i know that there were people who were like i want that for myself Mm -hmm. Because he's clearly like in love with something right now. Mm -hmm. He's he's in love with obvious. It was himself and his own thoughts that weren't even that deep. It's like, oh, this is what it looks like. The negative space of three bubbles coming to get three circles coming together. And now I'm going to go into this whole thing. And it's like, oh, dude, you are just in love with your own thoughts of sitting with your own genius. But it's like, but it's fascinating. And I could see people get, I can, I know people, I know that interview has messed a lot of people up in that way that they're like, what am I missing? What am I missing? Because clearly there's some, there's something so interesting here. What am I missing? And I think yeah. that's how people get messed up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's that whole thing of not so much what's said, but how it's said. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you know, it was. Oh, go ahead, Andrew. Well, isn't it like one of the biggest interviews? Like, it, and like, it seems like a very, very random person, unless I'm missing something. I mean, what was the last big thing he was in? Like, I haven't heard from this dude in a while. Uh, I actually got into an it, argument. Yeah, it's been a while. It's, I Empire? actually. No, he wasn't in Empire, but he was in another show like that, that that I'm not recalling where he was nominated for an Emmy, I believe, for it. And I'm not remembering the name of the show. I don't know. The last movie uh, I remember is him seeing, seeing it. Was that movie Crash? Was that it? Crash. Yeah. He was nominated. I think he was nominated for. No, he was nominated for an Academy Award for Hustle and Flow, but he might have been for Crash, too. Crash well, also. I legitimately got into an argument with a friend of mine one time because I thought it was Cuba in Iron Man 1. And it was him. 
And I didn't no, know it was him. Yeah, it I know what I'm saying. I was, I was yeah. saying, I was like, so that's how much of an impact he had on me. I was like, oh, I don't right. even remember which guy it was. I mean, his character was so, and so to suddenly have this guy and like, granted, I'm not running in the, in the, any of the spheres of the Roganites or whatever, but like, um, I'm, I, I, even I'm hearing about it. I'm like, okay, so what's going on with this guy? And I mean, it wasn't it, like I, I don't know. Again, you you would be the guy, super. Maybe even pull it up, but but it yeah. seems like it was a big number. It's like it's like seven million views or something. Uh, it's super high. It's super. I can actually just probably pull it up here. But I mean, he hasn't. He, he's had like Elon Musk on. Like, are you saying? Dude, that- and that's just and that's just on YouTube, father. That's not including Spotify and Apple Podcast and all that. It was probably in the tens of millions. Let's see. We're just Aaron a little Howard. bit short of that once you take everything Logan. into consideration. <laughs> once you take our Apple Music and our Spotify and our YouTube, we're yeah, it's at dude, close. it's at seven point five, it's at seven point five million right now. Yeah. On YouTube? On YouTube. Man. Wow. You know. That's not considering Spotify. That's not considering Apple. And, you know, one of the things that I found super interesting, and it just goes to just how charismatic Terrence Howard is, is like Joe Rogan was basically didn't question really anything that he said. But there was one moment and it was like Terrence Howard, just like matter of fact, we said, oh, there's a a hundred and thirty thousand years of water damage under the sphinx and joe rogan the one thing joe rogan knew about and he was like no 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 there, there's like 1500 we've had such and such guy on and he measured it and he did all and terrence howard was just like oh 1500 and just moved on and i was like wait 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 hold up this dude just said something that was so far off and you knew but you just assumed that every other thing that he said you just took it at face value but the one thing that you knew about that he made a statement about was dead wrong. Mm-hmm. Well, wouldn't there be but a thing? Just... <laughs> wouldn't there be a thing? And luckily, I have two people on this podcast with their faculties fully intact. But <laughs> if if a person was random, ah. eh, I would argue that they do. I would I would stake a flag in the ground that they do. Um, that uh that if if you don't at a certain point like especially as a podcast host on that level if someone is ranting don't you just let them rant like you're just like yeah i mean i'm not going to be able to get i i mean i think you'd probably be a pretty good judge of character to be like any conversation or confrontation with this dude would prove fruitless like you don't argue. Rogan, you know what when rogan knows what he's talking about he he definitely he, corrects his guests absolutely but he, but he did but the rest of the stuff, I wonder if he's like, I can't really. It's like it's the Andrew Funk special, and yeah, speaking of narcissist, uh, a a tale, a truth about humanity can be attributed to me that goes back as long as time as I say bold things. The minute I'm challenged on it, I deflate because, sure. like you know, it's like, oh well, I don't really know how to back this up. I just sure. am interested in saying the thing to get the reaction. Um, but uh, if you if if he says that stuff at a certain point, like, are you just like going to be like, okay, I'm just going to let this guy rant for a while because he, he's enigmatic. He's charismatic. Mm-hmm. He's doing things. He's obviously has some kind of charm to what he's saying. And I'm not, um, what's the, I'm not co-signing any of this. I'm just saying, yeah, he's talking on my podcast. So like, you know, I think, I think the lack of challenge probably speaks more towards I forget there's some there's something that somebody said it's like some kind of bad guest and what you do with them and like and how you kind of just like let them talk or something like that because yeah certain- but the thing is i guess like okay like he lets them cook right mm-hmm. whatever but then think about i mean i remember the kanye interview that last one he did mm-hmm. remember when his when his set was all like hellblazer Mm-hmm. Uh, Hellraiser, like was all mm-hmm. like red, whatever. Um, I mean, there was a lot of back and forth on that. I mean, mm-hmm. oh, I, I don't. don't it just made me feel. It made me feel like is he because he's talking about physics and stuff like that, uh, periodic table, etc. Like, did he feel out of depth or something? Like, it was it no, was no, just... father, uh, father. This is my impression. Was this my impression? Was Terrence Howard was giving Joe Rogan exactly what Joe Rogan was thirsting for? 
And I think what a lot of people are thirsting for that, that it's like, I think that this is because it's, I, I think Terrence Howard nails it perfectly is that there's people who over this, over the last five years, four years, five years now have, and, and Rogan's been one of them have had their, like their blind faith in like science and all of this questioned and challenged the ones who have like really had their eyes open have just turned towards the church. Right. But mm. there's others who, and I would have probably been in this camp, like who have some spiritual experience, especially those who have had experiences with, with psychedelia. Right. So who know that there's something out there. Rogan's done DMT a bunch of times. Right. He's, he's gone into the wilderness. I'm sure he's done sweat lodges and, you know, he's accomplished in these other practices and whatever. And, but they don't, they're like, ah, I can't go. I can't go all the way because they still can't break out of this thing that like, especially people who were maybe raised Catholic, lapsed Catholics. And they're like, oh no, I know what Christianity is and it's BS, right? I know what it is. It's BS. And so this Gnosticism mm -hmm. is like it, mm -hmm. it, cause it ticks all the boxes where he's like, Ooh, I get to have like a scientific religion kind of, I get mm. to have the spirituality that's also tied in with all the cool science stuff that I like well, okay, okay, aliens okay, 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 okay. and all of this. You know, it's the, the, it's the religion about... of the future. It's yeah, the religion of the future. It's the religion of the future. And that's the thing is it gives, it is Gnosticism because instead of, it gives the faux, it, it gives the anti experience, right? In the place mm -hmm. of, in regards to the divine energies. Exactly. Right. It's like, oh, I get, to, I'm getting privy. Um, I'm privy to no mysteries. The mysteries. I, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm privy to, to, to gnosis, right? Mm -hmm. to, to information. Um, and so that's interesting to me, especially in light of, you know, the whole from that article about you know when he when he had the breakup with his wife and mm -hmm. you know I'm I I am going to use all my gifts to destroy humanity and I'm the uh, antichrist he said I'm the antichrist yeah 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 talk about narcissism this is like yeah you okay you all right supreme supreme narcissism and I, I you know one of the things. It's always it always catches me when it was like because there was no reason for him to do this. But that other guy, Billy Carson, who's all about the Emerald Tablets, he does it, too. And he's been making the rounds. But it's like they always got to go back to and say something like, oh, the Bible is a trick. It's a control mechanism. What you learn in the Bible. And then this guy was like, I was raised a Muslim, but I always wanted to be a Jehovah's Witness. Like, that's what he, you know, he said that many times. I was really, I always wanted to be a Jehovah's Witness. And then he goes on Rogan and he's like, no, the Bible and what they're teaching, it's wrong. Science is wrong. The Bible is wrong. But I've got the secret. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, this is it. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is it. This is the blueprint. Yeah, <laughs> that blueprint. That's the blueprint for sure. And but then when, loved and the, they loved it. They loved it. Well, because, and because he's got patents, Father. He's got patents. And I'm like, well, you know who else has patents? Pfizer, AstraZeneca. Yeah. Mm. You know what I who's mean? Like, who's got the best patent? Huh. Elon. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. He's, which McConnell's got even better than, was it HR 666? No, zero. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Isn't that, Microsoft. isn't that. Bill Gates. Yes, Bill Gates. Yeah, and it's yeah. a vaccine. It's a vaccine patent, isn't it? No. What is it? What is it? No, it's a cryptocurrency patent. Oh, it's a bio right. cryptocurrency patent. Bio produce. crypto. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. He's got he's got the best patent. And you know who's doing that? Biometric cryptocurrency. Hmm. Sam Altman, WorldCoin, the founder of the C current CEO of OpenAI, hmm. Chat GPT hmm. and all of that. His other company is biometric cryptocurrency. I'm wondering, we've left, whatever. We're just... Yeah. I don't even know where we're at. Right 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 where where we go? We're where we go. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder if someone, you know, here's the Scooby-Doo mystery. I wonder where the connection drops into Microsoft on that. 
No, ability. Microsoft is the Microsoft is the main investor in OpenAI. Hey, father, Bill Gates, the main investor. Bill Gates created Microsoft. There's the connection. Yeah, we know. No, I know. That's it was super obvious. That that that's another attack on <laughs> on, on Boomer Priest. Well, well, um, well. Have no, you seen? It have, have, <laughs> no. It's, so have uh, you guys? It's, have you guys? Anything, did, it's, didn't if we? anything, it's self-deprecating because it's like, good job, Andrew. It's like, good job, buddy. I'm like, yeah. I think Bill Gates. There's some kind of link with Microsoft there. I don't know what it is quite yet. I'll get there eventually. But I mean, um, I don't know if people even know. Like, just to be clear, just just so everyone knows, we're not just making stuff it, up. There's an actual patent that you can look up. Oh, but that's that, by Microsoft. I don't think I think a lot of people know about that. The, the six 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 pet. But what I want to talk about is hold on. Didn't we cover the world coin uh, orb? Didn't we cover this? Hold on. It's saying my no. connection is unstable. Didn't we cover this? No. This is what they do. They've got these orbs that they're walking. This orb. Was it a palantir? It's a palantir. Oh that they, man! That they walk around with, and they scan your eyes, and that's how they put you into the system. Oh man! They're walking around the world with these father palantirs that you look, and there's and there's Sam Altman. Wow! With it. Oh man! And you look and see they take it around. And you look into it, and it scans your eyes, and then it gives you your cryptocurrency private key. Look. Oh man! See, he's looking into it with the mask on. With the mask on, and this is oh, and this man. is the same. This is the same guy who's the CEO of OpenAI. And his whole thing is this: the reason why he said how these two are combined is he says. Since the whole world is going to be filled with AIs, we so I'm going to go and scan every human on Earth and give hold you on, all on, an ID on. in my system. Hold on, Cyprian. Your connection lost a brace, like right at a very okay. part. You said you're quoting him saying, "Since the whole world is going to be filled with AIs, say it again." We, I we need to have a system where we can be sure that we're dealing with the human. Uh -huh. And so I'm going to scan every human, their biometrics, and put them into the system and give them an ID that they can verify with their biometrics. Here we go. <laughs> it can't be. There's a, could it be any more straightforward? If, if, listen, listen, y'all. If you guys want to click off now. Could it be any more here. obvious? <laughs> I think there's a. There's a part in there's a part in The Simpsons where Kent Brockman, the news anchor, just screams like it's in Revelations, people. <laughs> and like I use that quite a lit quite a lot because it's just like, I mean, and but um, you know that's that's like uh what I would what I say sometimes it's not terribly profound, but I think it's true that if you want to be in the CIA, if you're in the CIA, the best way. To like throw people off the trails to wear a shirt that says I'm in the CIA because 100%. no one can get it. No, no one, everyone will be like, oh, so obviously Jerry over there or Jimmy is not in the CIA. It's like, okay, well, if you want to do it, this make it, make it like, um, make it so obvious, you know, just like don't even hide it because I mean, it's like that same thing with that documentary, um, How Big Oil Conquered the World. Any of that stuff, when you watch it, the, the ridiculous claims that they make are just a Google search away, and you can find it. Speaking of a Google search, if you Google search WorldCoin, that's what that thing is called, WorldCoin, banned. Look, all these countries even are like, this is too dangerous. Hong Kong directs WorldCoin to cease operations. Portugal bans WorldCoin. Uh, Hong Kong, Europe, more in Europe. WorldCoin hit with another ban order in Europe. Worldcoin suspended in Kenya. Worldcoin faces bans worldwide. Worldcoin banned in Portugal. Spain's high court upholds a ban on Worldcoin. Worldcoin ordered to halt biometric collection. So, like, it's bad. Even the even these countries are realizing, like, oh no, 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 no. This is really bad. No, 
something's fishy there though. Are they just wanting their own? See, this is this is where the maybe. The, do you see what I'm saying? It's like I do. no, I, like it's like um, I'm trying to think of a, a kind of correlation, but them doing that makes me go like, oh, it's probably just because. It's one of those things where it's not like good good hat, you know, black hat, white hat. It's like, yeah, Worldcoin's bad for for the obvious reasons, but it, it's it, if these governments don't want it to happen, is it because it's not theirs? But it's like it's bad. like a gang. It's like one gang shooting at the other gang for selling yeah. drugs on their turf. They're yeah, not yeah, shooting yeah. at them for selling drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're shooting at them for doing it on their turf because they want right. to sell the drugs on their turf. Right. That that's my read on it. Is yeah, like fair enough. Which is even a little more scary. Yeah. Right. That they're like, no, no, no. We we that we had plans to do this. Yeah. Well, the beast has many heads. Ah, oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. There it is. Mm hmm. All right, mm -hmm. gentlemen. He's over. He's overstepping the bounds. But I do feel like, you know, and and as father, and I mean, I've I've quoted, you know, I've quoted you so many times of saying that the demons are bleak, boorish, and banal. Yeah. 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 And it just seems to me like, hey, look at my palantir, straight out of Lord of the Rings. Oh no. Yeah. Just, freeze on yeah you're frozen a little bit but i mean yeah it's it it has to be like um has to be right there I, oh. Lord of the rings right pal palant yeah palant nope yeah. i'm gone no you're you're still here but let's stop there okay because yeah. we i yes but we don't want to go much further because we are losing you more and more okay okay and we're coming on two hours anyway we are we are we're almost at two hours so Thank you very much for listening, I guess. Um, if you want to contact us, uh, contact at royalpath.network, or people still reach out to me at andrew at royalpath.network. Again, that's going to take a little while for me to get back to you, but I will get back to you. Um, uh, anytime we mention music, we try and throw it on a playlist on Spotify, our Apple music called Royal Path Podcast Playlist, something like that. I can't remember. I think that's it. Uh, we have a merch store. We don't see any of that money. Oh, Father, is there anything going on on the East Coast this weekend? Well, interestingly enough, you ask, Andrew. I'm going to be speaking at St. Michael Remaining Orthodox Church uh, the 31st of May, uh, June 1st and June 2nd, doing a little three-day retreat there. Um, this is uh, St. Michael's Romanian Orthodox Church in um, Southbridge, Massachusetts. Um, if you're interested in checking it out, um, go to www.stmichaelorthodox.com or you can call area code 508-909-6607. Um, I'm going to be speaking about emotions. Um, I'm going to also be speaking about confession, finding the deep heart. Um, and, you know, it's, I'm looking forward to um, it's Probably going to be my only. Um, I had to turn down uh, Montanaga this year. Uh, it's going to be my only um, speaking engagement, more than likely, because I'm still uh, still recovering. So traveling is really um, not very feasible for me. But you know, this was a longstanding um, uh, engagement. I'm looking forward to it. But I hope people can can come check it out this weekend uh, if you're able to. Uh, the thirty first. Uh, that's this Friday uh, up till Sunday. Um, and I think it'll be good. Cool. Enjoy the left coast. <laughs> da, da, da. Anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, so um, what, then there's also. Uh, also too. Let me. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if we put it out. Let's, let's put, um, check out Our Lady of the Lost. Mm. Uh, oh, I we'll, need to put the we'll, link for that. Yeah, yeah, we'll put the link. Our Lady of the Lost, the website for uh, the convent, the Mother God's Secret Lost, the sisters, and check out the blog post written by Sister Glicaria, um about our conversation was the last week, speaking mm -hmm. about the, the billboards and and such. Um, and check out what the the nuns got going on. Our Lady of the Lost. Is it? I think it's 
We'll put the link in there. I think it's .org, I think. <laughs> um, that is also where you can purchase Father's Icons as well. I'll put the link, right? yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, then there's also Scola, Scola Coffee. We're going to continue to shout them out. Um, like made through the Mount Tabor School, uh, uh, associated with St. Mary of Egypt, um, strongly, obviously. And uh, please check that. That's pretty great. I mean, my wife is a coffee snob. This is my plug. This is my wife is a coffee snob. She can't just do most just regular store brands of coffee or whatever she just doesn't like the way it tastes but she likes scola she likes scola That's quite good. a bit so good, good. yeah and it's a remarkable it's a um it is a far cry from what we were doing before at coffee hour with folgers and then <laughs> we started doing scola and it's now just no longer yeah. drinking coffee because we need to get rid of the caffeine headache it's actually like really good so yeah. no shade to folgers you're doing a fine job but I just don't like your coffee very much. Um, and then I'm trying to think, oh, Jack, again, killing it, killing it, absolutely killing it with the um, with the thumbnails. Uh, fourth member of the show, absolutely. Like, man, I was like, going through, just for some reason, I was going through, I can't remember what it was. I was going through old episodes for some reason. I was like, man, these are awesome. Like, these are really, especially, I can't remember what it was, Father, the one with, like, the icon of, like, the dragging, gobbling people up or something like that. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah I can't, it was, like, 20 episodes ago. I was like, that is just so cool. Uh -huh. For a lot of reasons. Um, but I think that's, I think that's all there is. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But I think that's it. So thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Uh,